Hello everybody, my name is Anthem. Welcome, welcome to a brand new Let's Play series in Hearts Final 4 Kai Strike. Today we are going to be playing as the Xinjiang clique over in Western China. Um, so we're not going to be finishing the Germany campaign. That will be back tomorrow. Uh, my plan, at least for right now, for the channel, is we're going to kind of alternate series. So on Mondays it'll be Series A, on Tuesday it'll be Series B, Wednesday Series A. Kind of back and forth like that. That's at least going to be my plan. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um... Anyways, the introduction to the Xinjiang clique. The Xinjiang province in China has had a disruptive history like much of the Northwest, as the region has been constantly plagued with whispers of unrest to this day. The Xinhai Revolution spawned yet more of an already of the already used to uh, chaos caused by a local Uyghur population uh, being more Central Asian than Chinese. The present governor, Wan Diha, failed to keep the situation under control, fleeing the province and leaving it in the hands of his trusted advisor, Yang Zhenjin. Yang, through, uh, the, uh, through uh, shrewd dealings and violent repression, has kept Xinjiang stable for his 20 years of governorship. Yang himself is a very paranoid man, taking all possible precautions to prevent uprising while still repressing the, Uyghur, uh, the Uyghurs located within Xinjiang to no end. By 36, he's a secluded soul, staying within his house and rarely coming outside due to a fear of political assassination by one of his few re uh, retainers left. Most duties are handed between his three most powerful advisors, Jin Shiren, the uh, Daoyin of Hataomai. Uh, Xiaowu and the Doyin of Asku and the Foreign Minister Fan Yonan. Together, these three hold most of the everyday administration of Jin Han, uh, while taking orders from Yang himself on occasion. For now, status quo within Jin Han is to keep the uh, is kept, but Yang's seclusion is getting worse and worse. Anything could happen. Did I do I have to scroll back up and then do this? There we go. The Kumon Khanite is officially protectorate of the, of the uh, Qing within Xinjiang. And is a largely a stabilizing factor for Xinjiang itself. Currently ruled by Nasir Shah, the Khanid does very little to this day to the ruling of uh, Xinjiang, besides having to pay tribute to the Xinjiang government yearly. Why does this matter? Many see the Kuma Khanid's uh, current autonomy as the only thing keeping tensions within uh, Xinjiang from exploding, as it uh, shows the current degree of Uyghur uh, rule within the province. Even if people don't like the current uh, ruler Nasir. The uh, existence is key to our peace in the Northwest, and only an absolute fool would even dare to try to mess with its presence. The people of Xinjiang are uh, by far the most unique in China, as many would argue that the majority are hardly Chinese at all. One of the largest ethnic groups in the, is the uh, Uyghur population, uh, which is by far the most nationalist and well-known ethnic group within Xinjiang. Two of the other notable groups are first the Kazakh population in the Northwest, with a population about 400,000, and the tokens in the South. Um, the Zhejiang version of the Chinese Wu, with a population of around 450,000. The Tongans and Uyghurs are known for uh, shaky relations, as the minority Tongans have uh, long held control over the majority of Zhejiang. As seen now by Douyin of uh, Haton being Ma Saru. Due to the overall separation from the Chinese people, the Uyghur and Kazakh populations have long spelled the most trouble for our administration, rising up numerous times in the past in order to establish their independence from the rest of China. So, what our goal is for this series, I'm not going to play as the Kumakonet. We are not going to play as East Turkestan that rises up. Those will be, like, different series we will do some point in the future. What our current path is going to be, I don't know. But we are going to try to kind of keep central control over here. Whether or not it's going to be aligned to the Qing, whether or not it's going to be aligned to um, Chen... Um, to Chen Ming, whether it's going to be aligned to the KMT, we'll kind of have to see where the rest of China ends up. But we're not going to be playing as East Turkestan, we're not playing as a Kuma Khanate. So, we have four factories. We are one, zero, and three. Honestly, not horrible. We will get our production efficiency cap, let's get research up. And because we are such a small economy, we'll probably end up being... I actually can't build anything. I oh, know I can build something up here, okay, cool. We'll probably end up being like a fairly um, import heavy country since we don't have like, well, do we have any natural resources? We have three aluminum and four chromium. I mean, I guess that's technically something. We're producing one rifle right now, 4.3 per day. We'll throw in a, a company on this as well. Sounds good. Do we have any national focuses? The answer is absolutely not. So we have to recognize the three reigns. Because at some point, there's going to be civil war. I don't, I don't think there's a way to avoid the civil war in Xinjiang. And I'm probably going to pronounce that name 
wrong multiple times. I tried looking at pronunciations. There's a British and an American pronunciation. I think I'm fucking both of them up. Troubles in the North. The Zarya, mostly occupied by both Kazakhs and Mongols, have been a troll spot for Yang's administration since its emergence, serving as a hotspot of mainly Mongolian bandits to launch raids against our people. Despite being silent for the past year, troubles within Western Mongolia under uh, Yungern's regime have spread to Xinjiang, as these bandits have uh, re-emerged once again. We'll need to wait for Yang's response on the issue to deal with the problem, but until then, they will be troublesome. Do we have anything in here to form national government? I I would be very surprised if we'll be ever be in a situation to form the national government. It, it just does not seem likely. Okay, Savakon's been assassinated. Yang silence. It has surprised everyone, but his close advisors, Yang's response to the appearance has been limited as best. His paranoia of assassination has made him stay just inside of his home, telling his officials, Bah, these Mongols were hardly trouble for. I doubt there'll be much trouble now. The problem will take care of itself. Despite this response, uh, Jin Shirin, Yang uh, Zhenxin's uh, top advisor, has begun to mobilize the force of the North in order to deal with this disturbance. Okay, Savikov's been assassinated. Am I crazy or is the game to be a little bit quieter than normal? Let's crank up the audio a little bit there. The thing is, I can't afford to import anything. You don't do anything. We'll take our Army and Navy experience. That seems okay. Negative two on steel. I mean, we'll be able, basically able to do this immediately. So what do we have? I mean, this is basically just saying who's going to take control of, uh, take control of the region after this fires off. And again, I don't know who we really want to go for necessarily. Like, we're not going to go to war with Jibai Sanma. That's a Mongolian Tibetan issue that we kind of just stay out of. And within a few, um, within like within a few weeks at this point, China should completely collapse. There we go. Collapse of the League. The news of the collapse of the Zili hegemony in the South, the League of the Eight Provinces, has just reached our ears. Despite the shock, Xinjiang's relative isolation from the rest of China has left the ripples reaching us from being limited. Yang uh, Jinxin's paranoia uh, could cause for concern, however, he very likely feels the current position within the government ship is in danger. Okay, so wars are breaking out over in China. That's fine. Does this say that we need to actually have, um... Have, we, have won the Civil War? Doesn't say it necessarily. But I also would not be too surprised. Yang Jin no longer rules over here. So we need you to not rule over. I'm going to assume at some point you're going to die. I would not be surprised if you probably get uh, assassinated or something like that. But we'll just have to kind of wait and see. We could get a theorist. Do I want that? I think the answer is no. Probably really my mobilization might be a little bit better. I mean, actually, would it? Like, we don't have that many factories. Maybe this actually would not be that meaningful to us. Our population is quite small. Like, we have 3.68 million, which, I, which is a lot of people, yes. But for China, it's basically nothing. Silence. Silence is all that have been heard for almost a month now. People only come to Yang Chamber when they have something to report. And this past month has been uneventful, fight, uh, uh, besides the uh, Xin Jirin's army being almost completely ready to crush Northern bandits. Even then, many are suspicious of the lack of response from Yang at all, and all are seemingly sent, uh, being sent at all. Jin Shirin has decided to temporarily pause the raising his army in order to investigate the situation, before he heads out on a month-long expedition to make sure his superior is alright. Disappearance! To the shock of many, Yang is simply gone. The entire premises has been uh, searching high and low for any sign of Yang being here for the past couple of days, but there's none. In fact, his most, uh, most obsessions have been collected over the years, seem to be missing as well. Shin is uh, continuing to search the area for any signs of Yang, um, but the chance of Yang being uh, in Duya at this point is unlikely, leaving Jin and the other retainers in the worst position. It could take months to receive a message from the Qing on uh, who the new governor is, uh, leaving the most important spot of Jin completely vacant in the meantime. Excellent. Negative 225 political power? I guess because I guess because they, they know you're going to be just building up so much of it. So if that's the case... I guess, could we hire anybody? I think theoretically, yes. 
What if I just wait a few days? As the home of Yang Zhen, uh, Zhen Xin uh, continues to be searched, Xin himself has checked on the treasure of Xinjiang that is supposedly f uh, filled with the fortune of taxes gained from the population of Xinjiang. As Jin and his guards arrive, they open a door, and all the money is gone. An absolute fortune amassed uh, over the period of 20 years has disappeared, along with Yang Jin Jin, leaving many theories as to exactly what happened here. Most believe so far is that Yang Jin Jin simply left. Yang has left all of our has left with all of our money, possessions, and his title of governor still intact. And there's now a coup. Excellent! I love coups. Can I get like um a few more days? Like what there we go. Thank you, I appreciate it. If I could get myself. Let's get, you know what? Fitness and stability? Boom, done. And then we'll take our negative 225. And a coup! As the situation began to hit uh, Zin Shirin during the investigation, he realized the position that he's in. There's no new governor for months at least, along with no Yang Zhen Jin, and he is the most prominent government uh, official left within Dahai currently. He needed to make his move before anyone else arrived, uh, using his recently made army that was supposed to crush the Mongol bandits. As expected, he did. Jin Shirin and his 3,000 troops have stormed the capital and secured it completely, declaring himself governor of Zhejiang, uh, before a proper response from the Qing could have even been formulated. Not all are pleased by the events, especially Dou Yin of Asku, Fan Yaonan, leading many to believe that the crisis could be on its way to Xinjiang for the first time in long 20 years. Not only that, but it's also not even known what the Qing will think about this certain events, leaving Xin with absolute power over the entirety of Xinjiang until news is heard. So we now have ourselves a brand new leader. I'm sure he'll be fine. Right? Probably. So we can't do any of these right now. You do give us under political power, which will get us a, a little bit off of this crisis. Like, not, not by much, but at least a little bit. Recognize the three reigns. Once you're finished, I guess... What do we need for you? This needs everything to be consolidated. Okay. As many predicted, Jin quickly moves from Doya to uh, remove Fan Yonan's position of power before he could even act. Many noticed that what looks like a beginning of a power of a build-up of defenses, but Fan's accomplices were killed before any meaningful resistance could be put up. The Fan himself could not be found. Some believed uh, him to have escaped into the mountains to avoid capture. Mao Xiaoyu, the Doyuan of Hatan, has declared his loyalty to the new governor, uh, Jin Xirin, uh, aiming to secure his rule in the south. Jin Shirin has agreed to this, finally achieving his rule over all of Xinjiang, at least for now. Okay. When is everything going to blow up? Because it's going to be soon. With Mao Shaowo's uh, southern government declaring loyalty to the new governor, uh, Jin Shirin, Xin has managed to secure all aspects of power. Fan Yonan is missing, and with the cabinet slowly being replaced one by one, uh, Jin is surely uh, the ruler who has now proven himself to be on top during a time of stress. No one knows uh, what he has planned, but based on his close proximity to Yang Xinrin, it is likely it will be similar in policy. One piece still missing in the puzzle is the empty seat of Dao Yin of Asku, but surely someone will be appointed soon. I why would I ever need we're negative like okay we got 100 we got plus 100 we're at negative 287, which is pretty bad. Let's try to... 0.1 uh, weekly stability, actually. Let's get some forward assistance. I'm going to have to imagine that's going to be at least somewhat useful in some capacity. So we'll get that going right now. People love us, by the way. 68% support. People love me more than they loved anything in their entire lives. You know what? Actually, I might take radio. Because, I mean, war is coming sooner rather than you think. Doubling the Uyghur tax. With Jin as de facto governor, he immediately is putting in new policies regarding the Muslim population of Zhejiang. With these, the tax on Uyghurs, Kazakhs, and other Central Asian peoples is being doubled immediately. This is seen as completely ignoring uh, Yang Zhenrin's policy of treading carefully with the populace to avoid revolt, resulting in many seeing this as an overall risky move. But as long as the money keeps coming to us, what's the possible harm? I mean, sure, I will take the 100 political power, or 100, uh, yeah, 100 political power. So we are now currently over the edge. We have Warlord Inadequacies in the Army and Opium, which is also is like not great. Effective change. Searching for the Opium source. We get two civilian factories if we get some alliances, if we get some connection with Russia. 
Shen Shaokai, the new Dao Yun of Asku. With Fan uh, Yunnan's overthrow, the position of Dao Yun of Asku has been empty. Out of the multitude of candidates, including uh, <laughs> Jin Jirin's personal acquaintances, Sheng Shikai, the current chief of staff has ultimately been chosen for the position. Currently wielding a moderately sized army and having even more um, competent Shinja connection within the government, Shin has made what many considered uh, backed into a corner uh, to this pick. But Shen has a promise that he will uphold uh, the most respect for the position and the weight that it has. Okay, we're almost back to zero. Negative 123, honestly, is not bad. I, I Actually, it's pretty good. Dealing with the banditry. With Xin Sharin doubling down on his rule, he has found himself in charge of the banditry problem uh, among the northern Mongol population. Moving in uh, from Mongolia itself, this group has begun to wreak havoc among the Kazakh and Uyghur population within this region. While a minor problem for now, it should be dealt with before they can gain momentum and even possibly defect Mongolia itself. Xin Sharin already has a partially supplied and manned regime ready to move, leaving us in a good position to end this now. Okay, so we have a new mission. Which requires the 25 political power, which I do not have. 1500 manpower, 200 rifles go away. Honestly, that's fine. I mean, anyone that's here. With the majority of the government positions filled and Jin ready to embark on what he sees as the unification of Xinjiang, he has um, sent a messenger to Nasir of the Kumakanet for a meeting to associate themselves in Duhai. Hopefully this will make the Kuma people feel assured in their position at the new Xinjiang, bringing a new stability to the previously unruly province. I have a feeling that they will say no. Also, we lost our general. Throw you in here. Get these troops ready to go. Like, they're not going to agree to this. Like, that would be, I think it's a little, it'd be a little silly for them to do it. Oh, hey, <coughs> the annexation of Kumul. Nasir walked into Duhai, greeted with lavish ceremony along with many festivities to celebrate his arrival. Following a personal greeting from Jin Shirin and multiple cabinet ministers, Nasir walked further into the city of Duhar. Greeted by many, Nasir felt welcome and realized just how important a figure he seems to be. However, his pride and satisfaction didn't last for long. Nasir will uh, soon uh, was soon invited to Jin's personal residence, where they went into the dining room and began the feast. As they became um, overcome with gluttony, the unexpected happened. Nasir had two guns aimed at the back of his head. Nasir, your time is up. Come with us. Having no choice but to comply, Nasir was taken into a prison uh, deep within the Dahai, uh, possibly held there for the rest of his life. She wasted no time declaring the annexation of Kamol and, uh, and the arrest of numerous officials, declaring the region Hami, a well-known Chinese name. Hami, now officially incorporated into Jinhai administration, has finally united Jinhai once and for all. Nothing bad could possibly happen. It's all smooth sailing from here. The new cabinet. The new cabinet of Hami uh, mainly consists of members apart from Jin's close clique of individuals. Among these include Li Jinjing, one of the main individuals convincing uh, Jin to annex Komul, uh, Zheng Gaohu, the new tax collector and chief of staff Hami, and finally Long Jailin, who has been put in charge of the prefecture itself. All considered highly trustable, uh, according to Jin, he trusts them to lead the incorporation of these stray people. Um, former Kumla ministers, Yalu Khan and Novajin, have also been allowed into the government, although in rather low level positions, along with being watched closely by other officials. Everything is smooth sailing from here. I mean, one military factory. Actually, that would be quite nice. Volunteer Brigade of Weaker Cavalry. I mean, that would also be nice. So, like, we take you, we take you. We take you? Does that, does that sound about right? Mao Xiaoyu's reaction to the annexation of Kumul has been less than positive, to put it lightly. Although, for reasons other than political. Kamul, the peacekeeper of Xinjiang, did have a notable effect on suppressing northern Uyghur nationalism, but the south is what truly benefited from this arrangement. The more conservative southern people have long been in a hotbed of unorganized uprising and rebellion, which Xiao Wu has done well to contain so far through the use of police and overall suppression of information. However, such a major move as this might be too much to contain, despite Xiao Wu's assurance otherwise. We do have a research slot available. Let's use this for 1918 support weapons. Sounds great to me. Can Afghanistan have ended their hostilities? 
I guess we probably want to getting actually getting an extra unit probably is gonna be a little better than getting rifles. Like we have a surplus of rifles right now. We can also we can have 14 divisions. That actually is way more than I was expecting. Let's go superior firepower on you. Soon, well, we don't have enough guns actually for this, but we'll have this eventually. Actually, can we import guns? We can import artillery from my clique. Fuck yeah, let's do, let's do, let's do that. That sounds, that sounds fantastic. But I will say that at least right now, this is gonna be a good time to end this episode. So if you enjoyed, thumbs up. Not joking, always thumbs down. You want to see more? Subscribe and goodbye.